Hi there, my name is Handy Man, and this is my wife. Hi, Carve Hannah. <laughs> and this is our 24 foot long tiny house that we built ourselves in Tucson, and we are completely off the grid. And it was just so easy for us to actually move out here, do our own solar system, um, do future you know, homes or you know, future garages, and we can really kind of do whatever we want out here. And so that was one of the main deciding factors. Plus, I mean, the climate out here is absolutely tremendous. And it's beautiful and we have 40 acres and it's great. <laughs> so peaceful and quiet. Like no one's around. Pan around to the mountains over there. It is just like, it is amazing. It's so beautiful. So some of the most important statistics that a lot of people want to know about our tiny house is how much it cost, um, how long it took to build. So we actually built it in a friend's backyard in Tucson. Um, it took me about six months to do from scratch. Um, the only thing that I didn't do in the tiny house myself was I didn't do the insulation and I didn't do the drywall. But the rest of it, including the plumbing, the electrical, the framing, the siding, the cost of the tiny house was about $35,000 in materials and it took about six months to do. Um, from start to finish. We'll talk about our gray water basin. So all the water from our kitchen sink and also from our, uh, our shower and actually um, from the urine part of our composting toilet goes directly to water these trees out here. So we've got a pineapple guava tree, we've got an apple tree, we've got a, uh, what's that, a peach tree, and then we've also got a cherry tree. Um, what's really nice about that is that we don't have to provide any external water sources for them to be watered. Um, so we live completely on rainwater out here, so every drop of water counts. And it's so beneficial to be able to take the water that it's gonna typically go into a septic system or a city sewer system. And instead of it doing that, we can use it to go and water trees directly. Um, so that definitely cuts down on our water bill. These trees should start producing fruit, um, I would say next year. So this season we actually just planted them. So just because of the transplant and the shock that they have, they might not produce fruit this year. But our mulberry tree over here, which is watered exclusively just by our washing machine in the shed here. So the most important thing that you wanna know if you're gonna be using your gray water to you know, water fruit trees, for example, is that you have to use the right soap. Dr. Bronner's, you can use it for pretty well everything. And then you can just use it as like a normal body wash as well. One of the things being out here that I'm definitely most proud of is our solar system. So I actually worked as an electrician for five years, so wiring up the solar system wasn't necessarily that difficult for me. But the fact that we're totally off-grid with electricity is just something I just absolutely love. We didn't buy used batteries or anything like that. We actually used recycled batteries that came from a fully electric smart car. We've got our charge controller, we've got our inverter, and then these are the Tesla battery modules. So it's actually pretty cool that I actually ripped the, uh, the module apart that these all came in that actually came from a smart car. So I absolutely love this. This is clean, silent, green energy. This provides all of our energy needs for us. I've got a lot of really great YouTube videos on my channel that kind of goes over, actually I documented most of the installation of this. So definitely getting that really good source of information, especially from YouTube, um, you can really set yourself up for having a very successful system. So down here in the desert southwest, um, we get about 11 or 12 inches of rain per year. Um, it is definitely possible to live entirely on rainwater. So our rain roof, which I'm gonna show you in a few moments, um, it will capture between 18,000 to 22,000 gallons of water per year. But we get almost half of our rainfall in three weeks during the monsoon season. So we wanna capture and harvest as much of that water and hold on to it. And so that's why having so many tanks is so important out here. Right now we've been running on rainwater for just about over a year now. And uh, it's doing, doing real nice. With the tiny house and the awning, we only have about 500 square feet of catchment surface. And in order to catch enough water throughout the year, I had to come up with a bit of a creative idea in order to create more catchment surface. I decided to design and build a roof that is on the ground. So this roof here, it's about, I think, 72 feet long by about 40 feet tall. So it's just over 2,800 square feet. So with being in the desert and living on rainwater, something else that we obviously want to do is we want to do a lot of gardening. Um, the problem is that gardening requires water. So what we've actually done here 
is instead of using a standard uh, drip irrigation method for watering our plants, um, we actually use clay pots. So what these are referred to are oyas. So it's like an ancient technique for, uh, for basically watering your plants, watering your, you know, we've got carrot growing here, we've got some collard greens behind me. Um, it's an ancient technique to basically minimize how much water actually goes into the garden. So one of the things that I talk to people a lot about, um, you know, when they're deciding if they want to build a tiny house or not, is to not only think about the, the space on the inside, is you want to also think about the space outside as well. So the climate that you live in, I think can really make a big difference on whether or not you're going to enjoy living in a tiny house. It's 300 square feet out here. So we can have friends out here. I can set up the lights. Um, it's a really nice, comfortable place to sit outside during the evening. All right, so coming inside the house here, the theme that Hannah and I wanted, we wanted things to be very simple, very clean, very minimal. So you don't see, uh, you don't see like a lot of built-in storage on the walls. We wanted to keep the space as open as we could. I actually designed it myself in SketchUp. Our design is definitely very unique and you don't see a breakfast bar very often in a tiny house. And the reason why we had a breakfast bar is because of my wife's YouTube channel. Her channel is all about plant-based recipes and weight loss. We wanted to create a really nice place for her to be able to record her videos. So that's one main reason why you don't see a window over the, uh, over the kitchen sink, which is very common in homes because having that light behind us would have just thrown off the lighting in our videos tremendously. We love eating lots of really healthy, delicious food, so we spend a lot of time in here making, making meals and I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's such a, such a nice kitchen to be able to walk into. For any water that we cook with or that we drink, we put it through the Berkey filter. You put the water in the top and it comes out really nice and clean at the bottom. So what's really cool about our tiny house is that we have two different lofts. I would call this kind of like my office loft, and on the other side we have our sleeping loft. And by doing those two lofts, we're actually able to create enough space in here so that we not only have our shower, we have our composting toilet, but then we also have all of our clothes storage here. When we're doing the clothes storage in the bathroom, they immediately thought that the uh, basically the humidity and the from the shower would cause mold on our clothes. We haven't found that to be the case actually. Probably the most common thing that you see in most tiny houses is definitely the composting toilet. Um, it's just super simple to set up. Obviously with a tiny house, tiny shower. Turned out real nice. And just some final words for you. If you're thinking, um, if you want to build your own tiny house, definitely, definitely give it a shot. Um, you're, you're gonna be so happy when you get a completed house. It's just so amazing when you can say to somebody or you come home from a long day and you come to a house that you built yourself. There's a ton of research and there's a lot of worry that kind of goes into something like this. But through just researching and learning, I was able to get a beautiful end product. I've written a book called The Tiny House Blueprint, which has the installation photos, and you can actually go through all my videos and all the tips and tricks, things that I wish I did do, things that I wish I didn't do with this build. Yeah, it's just, it's been such a rewarding experience, and if you have the opportunity to do it, then go and do it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next video with Chris. Peace!